Hi, good afternoon. I am Claudia Gardea. I am an industrial engineer and academic at the Universidad Iberoamericana, Ciudad de México. A member of the Industrial Engineers National Association, CONAI. It's an honor to introduce Dr. Takuya Sugiyama as our last presenter. Dr. Sugiyama, born in Tokyo, Japan on January 18, 1986, worked in the Global Account Sales Division at Nikon Corporation's headquarters in Tokyo, and he currently holds the position of Sales Manager at Nikon Metrology Mexico in Querétaro. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you very much, Claudia. So, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, well, this is international conference, so please allow me to make, th make this presentation in English. Uh, my presentation title <coughs> is How Traditional Methods Contribute to the Most Advanced Optical Technologies. Today, we have many new technologies and we are surprised, but we don't really care about the old and traditional technology behind those. So I want to focus on those traditional methods and how those traditional methods contribute to the advanced technology in the industry, also in academic field. <laughs> so my presentation has two main chapters. One is traditional methods. I would like to explain about Nikon's old method. And this is not a history class. For the future of the students, I would like to introduce three examples of optical technologies. Well, uh, I thought I would ex introduce myself more, but uh, I'm running out of time. So I just want to add that uh, I love this country, Mexico. Uh, even though I am Japanese, uh, now I prefer living in Mexico. So this is my honor to hold this presentation to a uh, young generation of Mexico. Quick introduction about Nikon Corporation. Uh, maybe you, you have ever heard of Nikon before for Japanese camera company. That is true, uh, Nikon is a Japanese company and manufacturer of camera. But uh, through it, Nikon is optical component manufacturer. So not just camera, we manufacture microscope, which is industrial equipment, and body, uh, human body care unit, which is healthcare equipment, and semiconductor system in the industry. Nikon was established in 1970, which is uh, more than 100 years ago, and with a group of companies internationally, more than 90, almost 100, and more than 20,000 people are working for Nikon Group. At the first stage of the company, uh, Nikon was just making optical glass. Then they manufactured, I'm sorry, we manufactured microscope before the first camera. So like history show, Nikon is not just making camera, but optical components. And here in Mexico, uh, we have two facilities. One is Nikon Mexico head office in Mexico City. And another is Metrology Showroom in Querétaro, where I am doing this presentation. Well, for this pandemic, uh, unfortunately, both office and the, the establishment was closed. But uh, if everything is normal, we are very happy to receive visitors, especially students. So please, in the future, uh, contact us and give us a chance to introduce our product and technologies. So uh, let me get to the first chapter of presentation, which is traditional methods. This is about how Nikon makes optical glass. So here's a question for you. What is optical glass? Optical glass is a glass lens. And uh, maybe you might not be familiar with glass lens or some lens. For example, the lens in the cell phone camera is made of plastic. Uh, this is good for mass production, and we can have both. Uh, we can have those uh, in a good price. Usually, glass lens are for professional or industrial standard. 
But Nikon's camera is a high-grade camera. So all the products of Nikon, not just camera, but other optical components have those glass lens. And not just Nikon's, even other brands have Nikon's glass lens. One, is exa one example is for automotive industry. They have a camera, but inside there's Nikon's lens. And I cannot name, but even the competitor of Nikon using Nikon's glass lens. This is a proof of high performance and high quality of Nikon's glass lens. So how do you think is the optical glass made? Well, this is about the Industrial 4.0 uh, conference. By fully automated production line or by ultra accurate high-tech machine? The answer is no. But by those masters or maestros. With those experienced masters, Nikons are still making glasses by hand. So let me explain the, pre the processes detail. Those are the process uh, putting very simply. Well, if I have time or if I can invite you, you can see more detail, but uh, let me explain very quickly today. First, we blend material, which are more than 100 varieties. They are mainly silicon dioxide, soda, lime, potassium, and so many stuff. They are blended in the tank, then melted, then poured into the water and chilled rapidly. Then we can have a snowflake shaped pieces like this. Then those uh, pieces are melted again and go into the furnace. Here, those uh, material are formed and there's a huge chunk or strips of the grass down over conveyor belt after the cooling tunnel. Then those grass are inspected by human eyes with some machine and just by human eyes for individual check. And this is a grass strip made by human hand. This is not ready for the lens, but uh, I'm sorry, this is not ready to be called lens, but uh, some company are purchasing those lens, uh, sorry, those grass to make their own lens or some uh, like a government purchase those grass because Nikon's grass quality is very high. And after uh, getting a chunk of grass, those are cut into dices by engineer, one by one by hand, and polished to be a crystal. After cutting two pieces, there's a heat process waiting. This is uh, called hot press. It's a press with the heating This is an example. This engineer, uh, based on his experience, pressing those pieces. This is, do this is done totally by this gentleman with two assistants. This is very manual process. And, and other uh, heating process are waiting. And this is, like I said, this is a totally experience-based process. Every day, maestro are uh, giving the lectures for young generations. After heating process, there's a grinding, polishing, and coating. But uh, unfortunately, this process is highly confidential. So I don't have any pictures I can share. And I even myself has never been to this plant. And after this, uh, there's an inspection for visual 
and for optical characteristics. Sometimes, we, uh, not sometimes, uh, every time we use machine, but the final check is done by human. And we get lens. There are many varieties in shape, size, and material. So here, I would like to show how, where, and who makes those glasses. Can you see the video? This is the countryside of Japan, a place called Akita. And it is a factory making the grass lens, especially for camera. This facility is very old. This is the cutting process. This is the process of blending. This is melting. And this is a process to make furnace. This is like a wood oven. Cutting process, one by one. This is the inspection. This is a heating process. Those pieces are preheated in the oven, then pass to the maestros, then he make the press. This is a cooling tunnel. This is the final inspection process. We use machine, but it, it depends on the human. Oh, this is a grinding process. This is very important and done by human hand.
and those products are packed one by one very carefully and transported to other Nikon group or the final customer. Thank you very much for watching. So uh, like pre I presented in the video, those, those traditional methods of Nikon have not changed for a long time and still rely on human hand and experience and uh, still far away from automation. But those methods contribute to the most advantage, advanced technology in today's industry. So uh, let me keep going now to the second chapter, which is about the most advanced optical technologies. I brought three examples of latest technology. The first one is those lens and laser heterodyne. This system here can measure 30 meter away with accuracy of 0 0.3 millimeter. Please take a look how this system works. This is a very popular system in the industry of aerospace and automotive. This is an example. This system is measuring the position of aircraft. And this is the example. This system is measuring the surface and the shape of the component. So like those, this system are used in the manufacturing plant in aerospace and automotive industry. So what is the technology behind? This is uh, very difficult and complicated so please let me explain very simply. The first, this system transmit the laser to the object, in this case, aircraft, then receive reflection. Let's call this laser number one. And meantime, this system transmit the laser internally and receive reflection. Let me call this number two. And this system receive both two, then combine make new laser called number three. Based on the shape and frequency of this number three laser, this system can measure the distance very accurately. So how the lens inside contribute? Please imagine this system has to, uh, has to make a sniper shot 30 meters away so if there's any deformation or crack in the lens, this system cannot reach out to the position correctly or accurately. Also receiving reflection accurately is very important. So mainly for those two parts, lens inside highly contribute. And for that reason, this system can be used in the production line of aerospace and automotive industry. The second example is those lens and microscope and digital camera. I think microscope is very popular now. And well, uh, today we can buy a very reasonable microscope in Amazon or Mercado Libre. But uh, Nikon's microscope and lens are totally different. For example, even on the brochure, they might say same magnification, like 100 times, or same camera, like two million megapixel. If they use different lens, what we can see is totally different. This example is a chip on PCB. Let me show you. If the lens is not so good, what you can see is like this. But if you use Nikon's lens, Yes, same size, but more clearer picture. So that people can get high quality image 
for precise inspection and for accurate measurement. And sometimes with those microscopes, lens can show us what we have never been, we have never seen industry or academic field. This is an example of amazing pictures. Nikon hosts event called Small World every year. This is the competition of photo micrography. And this is the prize winner number three from the last year. This is a picture of alligator embryo. We can see nerve system and skeleton of baby crocodile. And this is a mosquito. And the winner of the last year was baby turtle. For the limitation of my, my PowerPoint, I cannot show a real uh, definition picture, but uh, if you like to see more amazing picture, please visit Nikon Small World website. You can have more many, many more examples. And the last and the third, uh, the third and last example is food inspection. This is a technology uh, brought brought you by combination of lens and spectroscopy. This system can bring you the next food uh, safety and quality. So what is the current level of food safety and quality? For example, metal, plastic, grass, hair, uh, paper, wood, and any other material can be detected by the system or human eyes. So nail in the bogle can be found very easily. So what is the next level? This is the next level example. Can you see the difference between A and B? Well, I cannot see either, but with techniques, this can be shown like this. This is a technique called spectroscopy. With this spectroscopy cannot be seen before, can be shown and can be captured. So what is spectroscopy? Uh, I'm not a professor about this and uh, I don't talk about the detail, but spectroscopy is a study or technique of spectrum and spectrum refer to the range of frequency and strength of individual light. Putting very simply, this is element of color and every material has its own spectrum and depend on the environment of writing, visual color can be different. So for example, under the blue light, white paper can be seen blue. And even if you use yellow paper, it can be seen blue, not green. This is spectrum, the color based on the material. So how the lens inside can contribute to this technology. Actually, this is an example of the system and the lens inside is converting spectrum light frequently, in other words, changing the color of light very, very accurately. It's not just like red or yellow, but many, uh, how can I say, graduation is exist, does exist. And also lens contribute to the camera to take the HD image of the sample because even the system can show the difference in the color, camera couldn't detect the position, this system cannot eliminate the contamination. So this machine can, uh, can contribute to eliminate contamination and also allergic substances such as uh, corn, wheat flour, milk, uh, some vegetable products, egg, and many stuff. So with those technology, uh, Nikon can bring next level food safety and food quality to the table. So uh, at the end of the presentation, I'd like to summarize uh, very quickly. Nikon has innovated unique technologies for 100 years. Nikon will keep doing this for another century with traditional methods and maestros. In the video, engineer said, and I totally agree, no other company can
can copy this easily. No other person can learn easily. We are still learning, but it is Nikon's core technology strong point and my message today for this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Takuya. So we have some questions for our participants. Uh, okay. First, I have the question for Michelle, and this is, do you think that, it, uh, that one day traditional methods would be obsolete? Uh, would, it be, would it be what, sorry? Obsolete. Oh, you mean disappear? Yeah. Uh, Probably, yeah, yeah, but uh, not in this century, maybe 200 years, it might be possible. Okay, thank you. Yes. I have, sorry, I have uh, another one from William. He asked, uh, does Nikon have a plan of production here in Mexico? And if not, do you think uh, one day we have one here in Mexico? Yes, I think it is very possible. Uh, U.S. is great market, and so is Mexico, but we don't have any manufacturer plant in Latin America. So in the future, it is highly possible. Okay, Carla uh, ask, uh, does the woman take an important job at Nikon or at Nikon plant? Actually, yes. Uh, Nikon has many female uh, employee, and for the environment of ladies, Nikon is one of the best in Japanese company. They can have a pregnancy leave and also a special holiday uh, for female uh, personnel. Thank you. Sebastian asks, uh, doctor, in a word, what makes Nikon different from other companies? Oh, it's a good question. It's a very good question. But uh, people at Nikon uh, work really hard and they have some skill, not just engineer, even salesperson. They have something, I mean, we have something unique. So I would say uh, Nikon's employee are uh, irreplaceable. We always talk about outsource our job to other company or other country, but at the end it is impossible. So that's the strong point of Nikon. Uh, Mario uh, says, um, will we see some of these advanced technologies applied in future cameras models? Oh, uh, ad sorry, advanced technology? Yeah, advanced technology applied in future cameras model. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, just taking picture, uh, maybe we can do this with iPhone. So we have to come up with many ideas. And yeah, of course, with the new technology, we're going to make it possible. Okay, uh, let me see. Roberto, uh, do you believe that in Mex that Mexico has any potential or any opportunity in order to improve or develop new optical technologies? Yeah, yes, I think. And that's, that's the reason I am here today. So Mexico has to create more opportunities. Yes, and the medical market in Mexico is still strong and uh, you might not know, but a lot of uh, medical equipment is manufactured here in Mexico and ex exported to the United States. And medical components need uh, optical components for sure, for inspection. So uh, yeah, uh, Mexico would be one of the best country for those technologies. Okay, Isaac, what does uh, an industrial engineer do inside Nikon? Industrial, uh, industri well, uh, there are many, uh, there are varieties of job, uh, doing some research or not just developing, but uh, improving existing products. Uh, for example, Nikon released Z3s uh, last year, 
which is very new camera, but uh, some engineers are still working on those current model for better quality, for higher performance. So uh, there are many uh, jobs to do for industrial engineer. And not just for camera, we have a department for healthcare unit. And for like me, there's a metrology business unit. So yeah, there are tremendous job opportunity for engineers in Nikon. Excellent. Um, okay, we have many questions. Uh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay, Jesus, does Nikon company have a, a sustainable system? Yes, yes, actually, uh, well, I don't know how much I can talk about that, but Nikon has always five years planned. So it's not, we are not talking about just today or next year. That's a good thing of Nikon because Nikon is a uh, hundred years old. So we care about tomorrow, but we care about more uh, about five years after. So for example, uh, employee like me cannot get good salary because they don't judge me just for today, but they will judge me in the future. So there's a sustainability in Nikon and you can learn many things in the long term. It's very, I think it's very Japanese way. Yes. Okay. Uh, Joanna, uh, would you affirm that then Nikon success is mainly mainly due uh, to the traditional manufacturing? Uh, personally, yes. I don't know if I am correct, but, uh, well, I saw uh, similar questions, but, uh, well, traditional method is not everything, but if our method is automated or, yeah, or depend on the system or machine, other company can do it easily, very, very easily. But this is too traditional and you need to spend 10 or 20 years to make the Nikon's optical glass. So no other company try to steal that from Nikon. That's how we can survive for 100 years. And I might be wrong, but as long as I know, there are only two, uh, sorry, three or four, well, I, I say for company who can make a uh, industrial level grass friends from the scratch. So yes, uh, my answer is personally yes. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, let me see. Okay. Um, what, an, what another, uh, well, Montserrat says, uh, what another kind of engineers can be developed developing uh, their inside in Nikon? Uh, we definitely uh, need a software engineer. I talked about uh, more like mechanics today, but uh, like everyone loves iPhone, user-friendly software is uh, very important to this industry. Even if we have a nice car, if we don't have a, like a good software or the system, we cannot drive fast. So to take advantage of Nikon's optical components, we definitely need a good software. So engineer from the other side, I mean the software side, uh, very important and key to the Nikon. In this way, uh, can you tell us uh, what is the process of well, for the for the student to apply for the job opportunities? Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'm not in position for that, but uh, there's a company called Nikon Mexico. This is a selling company, but uh, we can uh, you can always apply for international position. And there's an engineering department in US, in New York. So of course we can hire people from Mexico as well. Yes, and uh, I'm the I'm the sales manager in creator office. So if it's good for you to work for meteorology department, I always welcome your CB. 
Okay, thank you. Well, we have many, many questions about uh, traditional methods. So okay. Okay. another one and uh, it's from Jessica and she says, uh, well, I, I read it. Which the new technology have you, uh, okay, which the new technology have you ever been thinking of replacing labor with machines? Uh, well, I think AI, AI can replace uh, human labor. It might not be machine, it might be a uh, idea or program, but not Machine cannot replace, replace human labor, I believe. But with AI, I think that would be that would be possible. Okay. Uh, the other is from Edgar. Do you have any quality system uh, in plan? Well, in plan in implementing in Nikon? Yes. Yes. Uh, we are very serious about quality and. Uh, some people from other companies say we are doing doing this a uh, little too much, but this is the uh, this is Nikon's way, and it's not just looking for the something wrong, but we always talk about how to improve those products. So uh, even even with the same camera, there's a new model. People don't really realize, but internally, I mean, inside of Nikon, those cameras are uh, improved and developed. Thank you, Doctor. We have another question from Belen Peña. And uh, she would like to know how have uh, Nikon been affected due to COVID? Oh. And how do you see, do you see market, because you are an expert yeah. in that uh, field, for yes, Nikon uh, after quite this? quite honestly, case. Nikon was hit so hard. And, well, uh, as you might know, Tokyo was preparing for Olympic game. And this year was supposed to be awesome because every audience wants to go to stadium with new camera. And of course, professional photographer would buy Nikon's the best newest camera, but everything was canceled. So uh, we have been spending the most difficult time. And uh, well, the good thing is Nikon is not laying off any people. So we are still working, but uh, for the business wise, this is, this is very tough year, yes. Thank you, Doctor. And now we have another one, and it's from uh, Isaac Lopez Guerra. Uh, what is uh, the new product is Nikon working now? Uh, I don't know if I can say, but uh, yes, there would be a... make, a, <laughs> make, a, make a trailer. Yeah, yeah there, there would be a nice, uh, like not semi-professional, but a high standard camera. Uh, going to the market very soon. Okay. So yeah, it's not. I don't think it's super expensive. So yeah, it'll be a very good product. And uh, Mexico is also on the list for distribution. So Thanks. you will have it. Yep. We have another question. If you have time, uh, this is from Manuel Javier Rosel Solis. What is your main competitive advantage when it comes to optical metrology equipment? Uh, for the performance, uh, the performance is the, our highest, uh, how, our strongest point. Uh, I don't talk about the quality of other brand, but for performance, uh, maybe on the brochure, the specification is the same, but with Nikon's product, you can have a better result all the time. So this is our strong point. Maybe a little bit more expensive, but the performance, yes. This is another one. Uh, have you tried to implement 3D uh, printing technology for the components that you are implementing in your products today? Of course, yeah. I think. <laughs> yes, yes. And actually we innovated uh, 3D printing. Actually, I was thinking to talk about that uh, on this presentation because uh, it's been already public, 
but it's not marketed in Mexico, so I avoid it. But our 3D uh, printing system is not for plastic, it's for metallic parts, which is more difficult and more, competi more competitive in the industry. So we are thinking to create automotive parts with those 3D printing system of Nikon in the future. Thank you very much, Dr. Sugihiyama. Thank you. Eugenia? Uh, we have we have more time for um, uh, for questions. So okay, let me see. Um, ah, okay, uh, we have uh, Maho, and she wants uh, to do mm. the social service in a company like Nikon. So is it is it is possible? Uh, yeah, uh, not in Nikon Mexico, unfortunately, but uh, there's a program in at least in Japan and US, I believe. But I don't know the schedule for this year. So uh, let me let me check and answer formally to the organization later. I cannot I cannot say you know uh, long information. So I will get back to you, Maho. Thank you for question. Okay, thank you so much. And the other is from, from Manuel. Uh, what is your main competitive advantage when it comes to optical metrology equipment? Oh, uh, I think I, well, uh, my, uh, my answer was the same. Yeah, the performance is a uh, yeah, strong point. Okay, and, um, okay, let me see, this is another one. Uh, I think that, that it's all, what do you think, Claudia? I have a question for you. Doctor, uh, and okay. what is what is the environmental program that Nikon is is working around the world? Uh, there are many, uh, like planting. That's uh, that's one of the biggest. And there's a Nikon school in countries such as Cambodia, okay. Indonesia. Yeah, in those countries, and uh, like ten years ago. One of the Nikon's plant was hit hard by earthquake. At that moment, many countries supported Japan. So to return, uh, if there's any natural disaster in the country in Asia, Nikon always cooperate. Recently, we, uh, how do you call a uh, plastic shield for the COVID, for COVID protection? Oh, Kareta. Kareta. Yeah. <laughs> Kareta. We distributed uh, those caretas for old people in Japan, of course, for free. Thank you very much, Doctor. Well, I think uh, uh, the question was if we have any um, environmental process yes. in. Um, oh, sorry. Our, okay. Uh, all glasses, all glasses used to be covered with plump, and now we are not doing that. We now have. Environmentally friendly. Okay. Yeah, I'll say, yeah, we do that. that I don't know the detail, but of course we are ISO certificated. So uh, our process has to be based on the environment friendly process. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, ATG says, uh, do you think uh, the current uh, worldwide situation will impact Nikon? And what is the developing plan in the short term? Uh, yes, uh, for the first question, the answer is yes. And the plan, I want to ask to my boss actually. <laughs> yeah, we have to stay home. Uh, Nikon is globally still doing a home office. Of course, depending on the country, it's different, but Nikon Mexico is still doing home office and uh, in Japan as well. So. Yeah, uh, I think we have to be patient and wait for a little. Yeah, sorry, it might be, it might not be a perfect, a perfect answer, but that's what I think, and we do. Okay, thank you, Isaac. Uh, ask uh, as as a Japanese company, uh, Nikon is still using Kaizen or other all metals uh, these days. Uh, yes, uh, of course we do Kaizen. And it's 5S popular here. 
It's Japanese uh, method. 5S is... Yes, and Six Sigma too. It's popular. Yeah, yes. yeah. So we still do that. So if we if I go to the plant, there's a huge poster saying like 5S, Kaizen, similar to that. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, how the traditional process add value to the products? Uh, the traditional process add advan? Uh, yeah, uh, how uh, the traditional process add value to the final product? Oh, uh, it's a good question. Uh, well, of course, it adds value, but uh, actually, the reason Nikon use traditional method is that is the only way. So the more like there's no additional value. All the value was created by traditional method because the machine cannot do that. Th this is my answer. <laughs> Okay, thank you, doctor. Uh, let me see, do you have another question, uh, Claudia? No, Eugenia, I think we have already answered. Yeah. Great, thank you very much for many questions. I, I really appreciate. <laughs> we appreciate <Yeah>. more <laughs> Yeah. your presence. Thank you to you. Thank, thank you. you. Well, uh, I, I'm deeply honored to, to stay here with all, all the team. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Takuya. It was a pleasure for, for us to, to stay with you. And I read all the comments for, from the students and you can see they, are, they, they say the, the, the same. Thank you so much. And they are from many places from Mexico. So you can see that they uh, are from many different universities. So we are very happy great. for that. Great, thank you very much. And if I miss any questions, please please let me know. Maybe not now, but of course, I will answer every kind, any kinds of questions. Yeah, thank you so much. So it was a, a unique and a special conference. I, uh, this is the last conference for the schedule. So thank you so much. Uh, uh, so in this time, uh, ladies and German, uh, gentlemen, good afternoon. And uh, with this, we, we finish with the conference if you don't have more questions. So um, uh, in the name of the Encuentro de Ingeniería Industrial, I appreciate a lot uh, the, the effort from the Nikon company with Alfredo and Dr. Taku Takuya. So thank you so much again. And do you want to say something more, Claudia? No, thank you very much for your time and for, for all the participants and the students. It's very nice to, to talk and to share with us the videos of the method of the process are very interesting. Thank you very much, Dr. So thank, thank you. you so much, every everybody. So I think that we 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 this uh, we finish uh, right now. So thank you so much and have an excellent day. And thank you for your participation to be here and to be here and of, of course to to start to to comment and um, and do this space uh, for you. And uh, well, I think. Uh, this is this is pay, but sorry this is space uh, help us to uh, know many things about different um, areas for engineers so for me I am very uh, grateful gracias gracias